Hi everyone, thanks for joining. So um, my name's Starla, she, her pronouns, and I'm currently working with Black Beetle Health to provide training and development support. So that's to yourselves and within the organisation itself. Um, I am joined today by the lovely King of BBH, who can quite adequately introduce himself. So, <laughs> Mark King. Hello, it's me again. I know <laughs> if you tuned in this week, you would have saw me Monday and Thursday, and here I am again. And we are with the phenomenal Starla, and uh, <laughs> she's going to take us through what's it? What is it today? Making a plan. Hatching a plan. Hatching a plan. Okay, now I got my notepad ready. Because Good, you need it. <laughs> I need a fresh page. I'm forever making plans and scrapping plans. And okay, so, so is the idea today that you're going to help me put a holiday plan together, or, or like where are we going with this? Where are we starting? So we're thinking 2021. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the time when people talk about plans, it's just a case of you know, literally just talking, saying things that they'd really like to do, mm -hmm. but not really having any sort of set direction for how they're going to achieve that. So essentially, today I'm just going to give you some tips on what you can do to achieve um, to get where you want to go, and we're going to look at it in terms of like you know, um, day to day, um, week to week, month to month, year to year. Um, and just really break it down so that you know you know that those goals are essentially smart as well. well let me sharpen my pencil. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like about to get real deep. There we go. That's it. So um, you know, as you've gathered, King is here today as my glamorous assistant. He'll be moderating the chat. So feel free to throw any questions or comments my way, and we'll make sure that we keep on top of those. Um, and you know, please don't be shy. Um, just you know pop them in there we'll pick up on them throughout Wonderful. so a bit about myself um i run my own company called staying in touch and we provide customer service sales support to small to medium-sized businesses um and to get to this point where i am now just with the whole learning and development side of things um, essentially, I've had to climb that ladder from being, you know, just your normal, annoying salesperson that would call you to try and sell you something that you know you don't need, but I'm going to tell you why you need it. <laughs> why just throw uh, going in there? I think you're brilliant at it. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's if, if, if you enjoy your sales calls or you just ignore them. Everyone's different. <laughs> but I actually had one come in today and it was just, I just, I have a habit now because I know I get so many telemarketing calls and such. That I don't even answer the phone and say hello if I don't recognize them. I just answer it and stay silent. That's and then someone started speaking Chinese. I was like, the what? <laughs> like, uh, all I said in response was, I don't even know what you're trying to sell me. Then beep. <laughs> there's an art to that as well. There's an art to definitely, you know, keeping people on the phone and you know making sure that they are engaged in what you're talking about in terms of you know doing things that's um asking them questions that are going to be within their best interest rather than just throwing little things about them about the product. But anyway, aside from that, so that journey um, eventually has led me to, um, you know, developing my own teams, managing my own teams and training them to get them where they want to be both in life and within the organisation. Mm -hmm. So in terms of organisation, we're talking about, you know, of course, we're talking about promotions and sometimes it's not even promotions, it's just skill sets that they might need. So when we are looking at life, it might mean that you need certain skills to get where you want to go. You might need certain qualifications that you know your workplace doesn't provide. So it's just to let people know what's out there in terms of things like TED talks and mm. extra, you know, extra courses that they can take with, you know, um, Shore Academy is one of them as well. You know, just dropping some names. So, you know, feel free to have a look. At is, that a, is that an online one, Shore yeah. Academy? So, yeah. Okay. So you in, you integrate those um, different sort of online courses into your plans to say, okay, what this is what you want to do. And here are some, like, do you just signpost them essentially to say, this is a good one. If you yeah. want to start working on, for example, project management. And yeah. then, so is that how you do it step-by-step step, and then you just signpost in there? Yeah, exactly. To be fair, with it, whatever it is that you're interested in, whether it's filmmaking, whether you want to be, a, you know, you want a bit more training on leadership, um, essentially, more or less you Google what you want to do. The best way to start really would be to see if it is that you want to get a qualification out of it to find out what the most reputable qualification is for that role, that, for that um, skill that you'd like. 
and then to get that qualification and to get that certificate for that because you'll find then you know if it is a job again that we're talking about that um when you do go for those jobs that's what it is they'll be asking for so the other thing you can actually do as well is jump on the job boards look for that job as if you you know as if you've already got it and or that's what you're going for and um look at the requirements and that's the certification then that you'll need that's so just to just to rehash what you said there yeah. um in the scope of uh looking for a job or developing yourself to take the next step in the career you're saying the good starting point is to actually look for those job posts what they entail yes. and um sort of take that and work on becoming what is um actually described in the job role itself yeah okay That's oh exactly. nice. that is great actually and then when where would one go after that so talk us through that now we're looking looking about a 2021 new career I've decided I've picked it out, picked out one that I've wanted. I'm going to say project manager at NASA. Yeah. And I got that pasted on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next step you would say in making that plan if you were making, helping me make one? Well, we'll go into that in a minute because okay. everyone, we're going to actually get the opportunity to, you know, set your goal and then to break it down into workable chunks. So, you know, what you'd, um, one of the things you'll be looking at is if you were, you know, working towards being a project manager at NASA, you'd have to look at where you are now, what skill sets you have at the moment, what capacity you have to be able to study something new, whether you have the time, things like that. So all of that will be taken into account. I'll go into it with you. So um, essentially, <laughs> what we'll be doing today, first thing we'll talk about really is the year. So, you know, of course it has been a tough year for all of us. Um, but what I would like to hear really is some success stories. Um, so, you know, in terms of what your biggest achievement has been. So, um, you know, if you want to share, feel free to put something in the chat and we can pick up on that. But King, what would you say yours is? Oh my goodness. Um, my biggest achievement. Oh goodness. Um, okay, I'll just pick one. I won't put the pressure on myself and call it the biggest one, but I'll pick one. Yeah. And I would say um, moving house during this pandemic, because, oh, my goodness, I thought I was just going to be stuck and waiting for it to go over. And then I started to push myself and said, now nah, we need to find a way to make this happen because I'm not <laughs> six months into lockdown. I'm like, no, nah, I'm done. I can't. <laughs> so I needed to move and have that change of atmosphere. And it happened. And I was I had to pat myself on the back. It was exhausting. Yeah. Um, but but uh, that was the first step for me to, um, I guess, to, to taking a bigger step uh, into uh, my mental health journey. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So you knew that was something that was necessary for you that you needed to do. And during the lockdown, you were like, this is the perfect time to get it done. So you just got on it. Yeah. That's yes. <laughs> and um, just I suppose the next thing to think about then is, you know, what did you spend most of your time doing during lockdown? So, um, you know, of course, a lot of people have been caught up binge watching Netflix. Um, I, I I have, I, I gave up on the Netflix binge. I maybe watch an episode or two of the Charmed remake or something. Yeah. But then that's it. That's it for the week, literally. Yeah. I, just, um, I find myself uh, listening to a lot of random podcasts and uh, audio books. Um, and listening to true crime stories, <laughs> but if you, but aside from that, I've been doing. Uh, I spend most of my time in the day doing research and um, ro well, role appropriate research for my day to day activities at Black Beetle Health. Yeah, and of course, I'm here as central support for Black Beetle Health, so that's that's my day. And I saw yeah. a comment actually say something similar yeah. was coming from a, a, a viewer that says, "Let me click it there." Working from home was a big accomplishment. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, myself included, it was a big challenge. I suppose the main thing as well there is being self-motivated to actually do your job. It's like, okay, yes, I know I'm getting paid for this, but, you know, you have to find other ways to, you know, keep yourself motivated so that you do, you know, you are as productive as you would have been in the office. Um, so make those extra steps as well to communicate with your team things that you you know you take for granted when you're in the office you might just shout something out across to somebody but you actually have to you know make the effort to join on and do virtual games or you know even you have um you know um, water cooler rooms and in slack is one of the um 
one of the platforms that you can use. But a water cooler room essentially is a room that you'd use to be able to just, you know, talk about. Anything. Get up, stretch your legs, walk over there. Just like, exactly okay. that. What, what <laughs> yeah. Let's really talk about how we felt about that briefly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not so easy to have those private conversations and that, you know, <laughs> the online one. But yeah, definitely. That has been something we've all had to get used to. Now, um, I know for myself, initially when we started lockdown, I got caught up in the same thing that, you know, a lot of people did, which was um, essentially binge watching Netflix. And instead of just having my normal breakfast, lunch and dinner, I had so many snacks and dinner. I was having banquets for, for lunch just because I can. So <laughs> you look like you're okay. feeling that, that as well. <laughs> and it's but, bad yeah. you know you, you'd think that because you're home you'd be able to do all those things that you'd think ah oh, if I had more time at home I can do it like cooking more meals or more elaborate meals or something for me oh my diet's been terrible listen I've just been this that's is dinner <laughs> that was basically me at the start so it got to the point really where um it was actually a good couple it was a couple months in so I enjoyed it for a good eight weeks and I was like you know what it's not something I can that I want to continue doing um, and, you know, I, I wanted to do something and, you know, invest my energy into something that was going to push me forward in, in life to where I'd like to be, especially thinking post lockdown. So um, mm. essentially it was something whereby I was like, okay, I, in line with my future aspirations, there was a 16 week leadership and management course that I found on Shore Academy and mm. it was free for the first four weeks and I like a bargain so <laughs> the, cog, the cogs got turning in my head and I was thinking okay I'm in lockdown I have more time than I normally would is there a way that I can complete this course in four weeks so looking yeah. at that that was my goal and so I sat down I set out a plan and I was like okay I'm going to break this down into how many hours I can humanly work a day um and you know from doing that I'm now I'm a qualified leadership and management um graduate for the EQF level five so snaps thank you (laughs) and it is just the case of being intentional and making sure that you know you do set out that plan and you know you you execute it so um on a side note I did do the same for Marvel films so I watched them all in release order I sat there and worked out how many I can fit in within a certain amount of time so I wanted to do it within a month on the on Disney plus because obviously it was free for the first 30 days I think it was managed to do Wow, I haven't even tried. I haven't started. <laughs> As I said, wow. I got over the Netflix <laughs> part. But you're giving me <laughs> idea. Really, is that you plan, plan, plan. If you plan, you'll achieve what you want to achieve within the time that you set for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, um, but and how is how how do you make that an effective plan? Because I know I can plan till tomorrow, till the you know I can plan till oh. Jesus comes. But I don't always follow the own plan that I set out because it might not necessarily be effective. Let's have a look. So that's what we're going on to next. So you're asking, thinking in the right way. We're going there now. So okay. I'm going to bring up a little presentation just because it's going to be easy for you all to digest it as I'm talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can do that. So give me a second. Let me share my screen with yourself. Yeah, pop it up when you're ready. Right, there's two presentations here. Why? Let me just work out which one's the right one. Oh, for the comment section, guys, you can spam us with whatever. I've seen a lot of crazy ones in there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love them all because, you know, I'm shameless when it comes to these things. <laughs> 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 oh, we done talked about food. We done talked about sex. We talked about seasoning food, yeah. <laughs> finances, <laughs> so anything you want to throw at me in the comments, go for it. I'll and you know, the banana bread recipe, because I know we probably all had our, you know, time at making that over lockdown. That was definitely <laughs> a big thing, wasn't it? I made mine in a slow cooker. I can't even remember what I did. I found it, um, I'm on a slow cooker um, group on Facebook. Okay. And it, it was good. It was like, a, it was like a nice soft cakeish pudding. I, I recommend that too. No more banana bread, they say. <laughs> <laughs> oh All right. my God. So we're going to have a look at hatching this plan for 2021. So stereotypically, I'm going to start the presentation in the same way everybody starts it with a quote. So um, 
I ain't my I ain't Martin Luther King. I don't need a dream. I have a plan, is what Spike Lee said. And I love this quote because it's punchy, um, but it also shows, you know, two different perspectives from two very brilliant minds on, they both have concrete aspirations of where they want to be, but they have different starting points. So, you know, with this, it's not something whereby we'd ever discredit anything that Martin Luther King was, you know, um, alluding to because it's the sentiment that's important so that sentiment that he you know that he had a dream in addition to the plan that Spike Lee is what talking about is the foundation for getting you essentially where you want to be so um what we're going to do is we're going to work today on how we're going to define goals we're going to break the bigger picture down into smaller workable chunks we're going to give you tips on how you can effectively plan your day your week your year and essentially your life. So um, we're gonna look first of all at how we set goals. So when we're setting goals, this might actually be something you've come across at work, it might not, but whatever, we're gonna go through it together. We're gonna look at smart targets. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna look at how you can plan your days um, just so that you are effectively completing your tasks. Then we're gonna look at more longer term planning and you know something that King touched on, you know, everyone can come up with a plan everyone can write it out and make it look beautiful and color it in and everything, but you need to, you know, find a way to execute it. So the last bit Thank is just touch on how we stay inspired to push towards that goal. So the first things first, you need to set a goal. So um, what we're gonna wanna do, um, if you grab a pen and paper, I know King, you've got yours, TLT also, Georgie, grab a pen and paper. Well, let's work through this and see if we can Get, um, get a plan set for, let's do it for tomorrow. So um, it's always good practice to plan out your day you had the day before. So we're gonna have a look at this one just as an example for tomorrow. So with your, I'll give you a second actually, let me give you 30 seconds to think of one. And it can be anything. It can be that you wanna learn a new song on, the, on an instrument. You might wanna knit a scarf or you know, you might even just want to wake up on time. That might be something you've been struggling with. And we'll work out a smart way of, um, we'll make sure that essentially the goal you set up yourself is smart. I had a bit of a dumpy week, so I hadn't been tidying up. So I think my goal tomorrow is to tidy up the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my plan, tidy up. Great, okay. <clears throat> All right, so if we're looking at, the SMART target. So this is essentially how you'll define your goal that you've set for yourself. So um, one of the you know um, things that King mentioned earlier, if you want to be a project manager for NASA, um, <laughs> this, when you do the SMART ana analysis, you might realize, okay, that's not for me. <laughs> okay, so when we're setting it, does anyone, does anyone know what the S stands for? And I don't know if I can see the chat while I'm doing this, but I'm sure you can, King. Specific. It is, does stand for specific. We've got the M is measurable. We've got the A is achievable. Anyone want to guess the R? Um, realistic. Guess. Yeah, that's it. So relevant, realistic, that's perfect. Relevant. And then the last one, time bound. Mm -hmm. Okay, so essentially when we're looking at these, um, when you're looking at specific, you're going to be looking at things that, you know, you want to know what you need to, what you want to accomplish, why that goal is important, who's involved in helping you achieve that goal, those types of questions you need to be asking yourself. When you're looking at measurable, so it's the quantifiable um, part of it. So you're looking at how much or how many. And the reason why you look at that is because that's going to help you to realize how you'll know when you've reached your end goal. So um, I'll give you an example in a minute that makes sense, um, you know, so it's in context. When we're looking at achievable, you'll look at how can, you can accomplish your goals, so how realistic it is based on your current circumstances, project manager and NASA. <laughs> um, and do you have the skills and knowledge to be able to achieve it? When you're looking at relevant, you're looking at, does it seem worthwhile? Is it the right time? Does it match your efforts and your needs? And lastly, time bound is, the when so a deadline so that deadline is just going to help prevent everyday tasks from taking priority over your longer term goals 
We have a, a, a quite a nice comment. I like that. <laughs> this sounds like a good model to apply to relationships. Yikes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so my goal for 2021 is to get to be like, oh yeah, it's to get a new new man or something. It's true. Oh, let me let me let me put let you change your goal, kid. That's my <laughs> Like, my goal for tomorrow is to find me a man. No, <laughs> one day I've been trying for six years, so one day <laughs> we'll count it. Unless it's a really good plan. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to try and look at those comments. I was about to, but it will just mess up my slides. <laughs> it's okay. That's what I'll do. <laughs> okay, so the example that I've done for myself, and you're going to do it for yourself as well, is the gym. So. I've started going to the gym um, and I haven't been going for a while. So I'm just trying to keep it up, basically. So um, I've set myself the, the, the goal of going to the gym tomorrow. Um, and what I want to know is, is my goal smart? So let's have a look. Um, so first of all, is it specific? So again, we're looking at what I want to accomplish. So my aim essentially is to lose weight. I want to get fitter. I want to get stronger. And it's important for my health. In terms of you know the questions there, who's involved? Um, my neighbour, we actually go together, um, so that's one element of it. The measurable, the how much, the how many. So I know what equipment I'm going to go on. I know what amount of time I'm going to use it for. I know what incline I'm going to set it for. I know the weight that I'm going to use, um, and I know the number of sets and repetitions I'm going to do as well. Um, in terms of it being achievable. That's a, you know, that's a questionable one because I went to the gym yesterday and if I'm going to say I'm quite sore, my muscles are quite sore from that. So um, I do know that I have worked through it previously. So I know that, you know, um, going to the gym is something I can do even though my muscles are sore. Um, but the other part of it as well is do I have the skills and knowledge to achieve it? So one of the reasons why I am going with my neighbour is because um, he's more familiar with using the weights. And so I'm tapping into his expertise to teach me and advise me on what I need to do so that I don't overdo it. Um, in terms of it being relevant, um, right now, I am in a position where I have more time for myself with the whole working from home situation. I'm not taking like, half as much time commuting. I can afford it. Um, and, you know, essentially for the lockdown, like a lot of people, it hasn't done much for my physical or my mental health. So you know, going to the gym now seems a perfect time. If it wasn't going to be now, when would it be kind of thing? So um, the last one, with it being time bound, I know the amount of time that I've allotted for the gym. So, you know, I will um, I will know whether, you know, I'm going for two two hours, whether I'm going for an hour and a half. And also I, also, I know the peak time. So I will make sure that I go at a time where I'm going to be able to get the machine that I, the machine that I need to get on. There's no point in me going at a time where it's like really, really busy because I know I'm not going to be able to achieve the goal that I want to achieve, I'm not going to be able to do the exercises I want to do. So that's that example. Now, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was clear. I see you writing down some things, King. I hope you all managed I'm to. Trying. Jesus. As well. I did kind of fly through it. Do you want to, <laughs> do you want to go through yours and let's, uh, let's work no. through it? <laughs> No. The question is, are you going to clean the house tomorrow based on, based on that? Is it, a, is it a good goal that you set for yourself? I'm, yeah, I'm trying. I'm like, okay, specific. All right. Sort the laundry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wash the dishes. Okay. Yes. Hang out the laundry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm still lifting. I'm like, okay, clean the windows. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm lifting. I'm still going. That's it. Let's write them down. We do set those smart targets and, you know, hopefully it will put you that one step closer towards getting it done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. So from there, what are we doing next? So we've looked at that example. Um, so moving on from setting goals, what mm -hmm. we're going to look at is essentially the reality is that there are many things that you need to do on a day to day basis. Um, it's not just the one goal you're going to have to set for yourself because life's busy. And, you know, essentially, we just need to work out a way how we're going to organise it. So the goal setting essentially just helps you, you know, make sure that you are setting goals that are realistic for yourself. 
the next part is breaking it down into data, um, into tasks that you can complete day to day. So in doing that, we're looking at the four P's of developing a plan. So we've got that we're gonna, essentially we're gonna create a list and it usually will fall into three main categories. Oh dear. <laughs> so we jump from smart and is this, is are we still looking at the same plan? No, so we're gonna look at that. So your smart target is essentially to allow you to achieve, um, to assess the goal that you've set for yourself so that you're managing your own expectations. So with, you know, with the example you gave just at the start when you're saying, you know, what if you want to be a project manager for NASA? It's not impossible, but you need to look at your smart, your smart target. You need to do the analysis to see how achievable it is for you. And if now's the right time that you'd be doing that and that type of thing. Okay. All right. And now what's so, the four P? Yeah. So with the four P's, what we're looking at with this is how to, so that was looking at one specific goal. With this, we're looking at the different tasks that you might need to complete throughout the day. So one of your tasks is cleaning your house, but you might have other things you need to do. So as well as cleaning your house, you might need to go to the post office. As well as going to the post office, you might need to do other things. So we're now going to work out a way to set those tasks in, in a priority order. Yeah. We have a so quick question for you there. How do, yeah. you know, how do you know if a goal is realistic? Sometimes you just want to dream. I hear that. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I mean, if it is that you are just going to dream, that's fine. That dream. The thing is, you may you may actually sometimes end up in the place that you want to be without following a plan. And that happens a lot to a lot of people. But if you want to be intentional in what you're going to achieve, the plan helps you get there. So it's not that you're not going to get there. It just increases the possibility, the um, probability of you reaching that goal. That's what it is. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with dreaming, but if you want that dream to become a reality, then you know there are these things that you can put in place, these tips that I'm giving you that should help you get that bit closer. Does that answer that question? Yeah, they said thank you. Okay, no worries. <laughs> okay, so um, when we're looking at these four Ps, so essentially it stands for, you, know, you can see it there, projects, people, personal care and priorities. When you're looking at your projects, you're thinking about what needs to be done. When you're thinking about people, you're thinking about your outreach, who you need to chase, what meetings you need to have, and your personal care, you know, that's things that you need to do to look after yourself. So whether that's, you know, meditation, whether you just need to take some time out to watch TV, whether you just need to call a friend to, you know, unload and vent, make sure you schedule time in for those things as well. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Sorry, I couldn't hold it. Go ahead. That was, was that one pretty relatable for you, Kim. Oh, you know it. <laughs> okay, so um what we need to do is organize them in order of priority, but it's not gonna be numbering and list which is what, you know, you probably would be your first go-to in terms of setting up, you know, a to-do list. That's what I always uh, do. I know. I, know. I, know. I mean, there's nothing know. wrong with it. If it works for you, there's nothing wrong with it. The reason why I say we're going to, you know, scrap it and consider an alternative, the alternative might not work for you. We're just throwing out ideas here in case it works better than doing a list. Um, oh, sorry, what was the, I missed one of the P's. People, personal care. Priorities and which one? Projects. Projects, thanks. So, tasks. Um, so yeah, what, what needs to get done? So the reason why, you know, I say, let's consider an alternative to a to-do list is because yes. a lot of the time it's a bit overwhelming because you see that list getting longer and longer and longer and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do these things. Um, and you know, sometimes it can be so overwhelming that you just don't complete it. You're just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Or you start adding unnecessary things to it, things that don't really need to go on that list. You're just going to put them on there, like painting my nails. I'm just going to throw that on there with the fact that I need to, you know, um, buy some flowers for my friend, or with the fact that I need to complete a, you know, a board meeting pack or whatever. You put it on there with all the really important things when that isn't necessarily that important. So. Oh. So we have a comment and I agree it's like so are you saying that a short to-do list is okay? Yeah I mean 
I'm not saying that the to-do list is, a, is an absolute no-no. I'm just offering an alternative. Because we if love a to-do list. You, if it works for you, it works for you. I mean, I myself personally use to-do lists, but I know that some of the members of my team at work, um, when they use it, they just they just don't. It doesn't make a difference. So you'd give them things, the list of things that they need to do, and you'd ask them if they've completed it, and they'll just they'll just say no, <laughs> just for the fact that it seems like it was a lot of work. Or they'll get stuck on one thing, and that one thing might not be the most important thing that needed doing. So this alternative way just shows. Okay. This alternative way just gives you another way to see, okay, what's what's important and what's not. And yes, on your to-do list, you can put numbers next to it. But yeah, it's just an alternative to see if it helps, really. Mm. So um, it's called the Importance Urgency Grid. So the first box, you're looking at important and urgent. The next one, you're looking at important but not urgent. The third box, you're looking at urgent but not important. And lastly, not urgent and not important, like painting your nails. <laughs> so um, what this grid allows you to do is essentially differentiate from what needs to be done because it's detri detrimental if it doesn't get done from what's on the list simply because you put it there. So we can do this one together, actually. Let's do it together. So I've got a to-do list here. Now, of course, What's important is gonna be relative to each individual, but the rule of thumb that I use to help me is I work out the, so I work out the urgency against the importance. So the urgency is set by a deadline and the importance is then based on the repercussions and if that deadline's not met. That's how I help me do this. But so that we can do it together as a group, I've just put, you know, some, um, essentially just a little bit of small print there, sorry, just press that, a bit of small print there so we can help categorize. It'll make it a bit easier for us to do it together. So if we're gonna, let's hypothetically say you've got a pack of information that you need to put together for a board meeting and that board meeting is next week and you need, you, you need to print that information, which one? If we're talking about today and that board meeting's next week and you've got it on your to-do list to print the completed information pack for that board meeting, which box are we going to put it in? Um, no right or wrong answer, answer, it's just making sure that we, you know, know where we're going to put it. Yeah, you got to do, do it now so it's important and it's urgent. That goes in the first box. You could do it now, it's true, but the board meeting's not until next week. So you could also delegate because it's a plan it's something that you'd add to your plan to make sure that you print it out for the following week. Lord. Well, I'm really anxious. So everything's going to end up in the first box for me, you know, <laughs> right? Okay. Just thought I'd let you know. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's see the next one. So if you got it on your to-do list that you need to catch up on these standards, which one are you going to put in? It depends on what the cliffhanger was because that could still be okay. <laughs> everybody's talking about it's like game of thrones oh my gosh when everybody was on like season eight i was still on like season five so for me that was important i was like i need to get there a, whoo, i know you want to go there for me because i was i, I made myself a mess because i was like deadlines for uni but game of thrones i'm missing it <laughs> And I need to be up to date on everything, so I will be watch it twice because I need to be ready to argue it through the week. Boy, that was a good time of life. <laughs> God. God. Priorities were so different then. Yeah, so different. Oh. Okay, so we'd look at that one as, you know, possibly we put it under not urgent and not important. It's the fact that it's a pleasant yeah. activity, you can do it later. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to pay your final notice on your bill that's due today. Uh, that ain't urgent. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so that one's a, you know, you're looking at deadline and problems. That's so we're look at that do it now, that first box, important and urgent. Yes. Um, reply to messages left on the answer machine. <laughs> I'd say to throw that under number three. So it's urgent, but it's not important in the sense that, you know, the fact that they could leave an answer machine message means that, okay, maybe it's not, um, 
something that they need to speak to you right away about. Um, if it is, of course, they'd probably keep calling. And at that point, it would become important and urgent because you'd need to handle that call now. So okay. I kept silent because I'll be okay, I'll be honest, that one's a four for me. Because <laughs> if it was that important, you'd send me a text. <laughs> you know, exactly. So to be fair, you're thinking along the right lines. You haven't thrown it under and put it. <laughs> Georgia yeah. said, I kept silent too. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, anyway, I baited myself up. Hi, mom. Okay. <laughs> a lot of them come from her. <laughs> and then we'll do we'll do a few more. Um yeah. so this one is, I suppose, in relation to you know what the previous um example that I gave. But if I was to check that the neighbor was free to go to the gym. Now for that specific one, I will right away tell you that for myself, I put it in number one and for yourselves as well, it might be helpful for you to do that because if it is that you're working, all these other things are important. Of course, they're your day-to-day -day tasks, but you are setting also personal goals for yourself alongside those day-to-day -day tasks that need to be completed. So if it is that you have a goal for yourself that you're trying to achieve, give it the same amount of importance as the other things that need to be done. Make it important and urgent make it a do it you know make it a do it now make it something that needs to be done because the thing is if you do if you do that later and you you know I, I text my um my neighbor later to go to the gym and they say oh you should have let me know earlier I was unavailable you know what I mean this then I haven't set myself up in the right way to be able to complete my goal mm -hmm. so me personally I put that as a number one but obviously everyone like I say everyone's level of importance and urgency is going to be different but it's just a case of making sure that you have those grids that help you to prioritize your work. Well, uh, if you need to call your friend for a catch up, where are you gonna put that one? Oh, it depends on the day for me, because that's normally an important and urgent one. Yeah. <laughs> you should know as well. Yeah. I will spam you with calls like catch up. <laughs> oh, I need to talk now. But if it's just <laughs> If, you, if it's not that you um, you know that you need the, um, you know anyone to kind of get their opinion or anything like that, it's just a catch up to see how someone's. Yeah, yeah you're right. It is. Yeah. I would say it's important but not urgent. That would that's me though because I yeah. I still find that as uh, as important because that catch up is like listen I don't want to lose touch. So. Exactly. Yeah, and it does come under your self care, doesn't it? So you know, of course, if you're if it is that one of your goals at that point in time is to focus on your self care, then you're mm -hmm. going to move it right up. In the same way, my goal is to go to the gym. It's moved. You know, I've moved that right up. Right up. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I hope that's you know a nice uh, uh, an alternative. I hope it helps in terms of you know not necessarily just having a list and a number in it, but that's just, that's just another way that you can that you can do it and execute your plan. Wait, don't take it off yet. Let me write down the... Um, Not done now. Do it now to delegate. I'm writing down the small text. Yeah. Do it later. Because if I'm honest, when I was first, you know, asked to do this, when it came to, you know, just the important and urgent, important but not urgent. I was all over the place putting things in random boxes that didn't even make sense to me. But then when I did have a look at those, you know, um, the types of things you'd be looking at delegating and doing it later and planning, those little headlines really helped me to organize what I need to do. Very good. Yeah. Right. Wait, what do you have next for us? What do we have next? Well, we have our week, month, and year plan. We're moving over to hatching our plan for 2021. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So essentially, it's very much the same as what we did before. So you'd be looking at setting your goal, making sure it's, you know, realistic, essentially. That's what that's what you're looking at or, you know, in line with your circumstances, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to develop your four P's. Um, and you're going to put it in order of priority. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at your long term planning, so your week, your month, your year, you're going to throw it on a calendar as well. Boom. Lord. <laughs> That's it. So yeah. when you're putting it on your calendar, um, essentially it's the same as what you've just done, but really you're just breaking it out, breaking it down into days. So I gave, I've got a little example here. So let's just say that you wanted to host your own dance classes by January. January 2021. So there's a few things you're going to have to think about. I'll just put a few on the right hand side there. There might be more, but you know, I'll just put a few there. And but you haven't got much time. 
Christmas is coming up soon. Some of the shops are going to be, I'm going to say shops, some of the venues that you might be considering hosting it at are going to be closed. So you're going to have to, you know, get out there and start making your inquiries. So the first thing you're going to want to do potentially is you're going to develop your wording, your copy for your social media. And you're going to set up your social media page because that's probably going to be the easiest way for you to get you know um get the word out there that you're doing these classes because you can invite your friends and of course they can invite theirs etc we know how social media works so you you want to you know get your write up together on what kind of class it is when it's going to take place um and so you know if it were today that we're looking at you might want to see about setting that up tomorrow now when i say setting that up tomorrow getting the word in together tomorrow when we're talking about you know setting up the social media pages you can do that on the following day so you've got all the word and you've got all the content you just need to actually create the social media pages so you do that then in line with updating your social media pages you're going to want to reach out um to your social groups so that's something you'll do throughout the week as well as contacting the venues so you know that you'll stop you see in here the reason why you need a calendar is because tasks do overlap now i've done it in this way really just to make it easier for me to explain to yourselves how it is that you can do it on a calendar but if i'm honest i just i just write them on so you don't have to do you know shapes and circles that's up to you some people are vision you know more visual but you can just write them on a calendar it's a little to do you know a little to-do list on each day okay. and when you're doing your to-do list of course when you're looking at your priorities that's when you can use that grid to help you prioritize mm -hmm. um and essentially yeah that's it so you know for this coming week well next week you'd be looking at contacting the venues reaching out to your social groups updating your social media you're still going to take into account your personal care so you're going to be looking at you know maybe on friday and saturday and sunday there obviously it's christmas day but but you want to make sure you're keeping the momentum up with your social media so you make sure you still get those posts out there and then during that week after Christmas, you're going to want to be planning your choreography, making sure that you actually have some content for your dance classes, <laughs> because, you know, you can plan, plan for the world and turn up and then what would you do when you turn up? So, yeah. Um, and you, you'll want to do your research as well. Just those are just little things like in terms of um, the cost for the class, maybe making sure it aligns with the venue prices, because, of course, when you have a venue, they're going to charge you for the cost of that room that you're hiring you know presumably and you're going to make sure that the you're going to want to make sure that the cost of the class is going to cover is going to cover that um so that's just you know essentially how you plot it out on a calendar yeah. to be honest it's more or less what most people do it's a comment i'm laughing <laughs> let, me read it. Let, me read it. let me read it it says oh, <laughs> i feel like i'm eavesdropping on a rich person's conversation <laughs> Good, I'm sharing these tips. I like that you think I'm rich. That's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 wow. But, you know, but at the same time as well, part of that is about, you know, sharing in a sales environment, we talk a lot about sharing best practice. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to because they like to hold on to the knowledge for themselves and they want to make all the money they can make. But I at the end of the and I get it because it's I'm so important. Happy you share all your best practices. Yeah, but it's important. <laughs> it, it is literally about lifting each other up. It really is. It's about lifting each other up and giving everyone the equal opportunity to get where they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way that you can do that, really, at the end of the day, we don't all know everything. Um, and we're going to have to share that. Um, we're going to have to, you know, reach out to somebody else to give us that knowledge that we need so that we can get where we need to go. Um, so that actually does fall quite nicely on to the next bit so we were talking about staying inspired the next bit was to spend time with a mentor um so yeah it was just that really that that very point that we've just made you know if there is somebody that knows more than you don't be afraid to ask them to help you get to where they are mm -hmm. and share that and get them to share their knowledge with you mm -hmm. um i mean in terms of you know you can do that both inside and outside work it depends what it is really that you're working on but if you have a friend that is particularly positive and they have really good methods for staying positive then you want to work with them to find out hey how can i work on my mental health and make sure that i'm you know positive and i'm lifting myself up and i'm you know after because after you do that for yourself you'll be able to do that for other people too so it is just making sure that you know you are not just operating in this little bubble of your own of yourself yeah, you're absolutely right. I can testify to that because um, 
especially when I lived back in the island, um, my, my friend circle started to look a little bougie, but I'll tell you why. And it's because I, I went and I seek, I sought, whatever the word is, uh, mentorship. But then um, it would just be in simple like little life things and it would turn into more as in I'd learn, I would learn different business skills, different negotiating skills and that sort of thing. And they would introduce me to different networks and um, it kind of propelled me career wise as well. But then those same mentors became friends. So now these were conversations that were regular <laughs> and um, it sort of picked up the pace of my life as well though. Uh, but still it did help me uh, I say that because it, it did really inspire me and it yeah. was it was that sort of um a feeling of almost safety when uh I know we're all adults but th there's times where we all run and look for the bigger adult in the room and that's almost what it felt like because it's like okay I'm not sure it's like oh it's great let me just call my mentor hey friend <laughs> <laughs> So, and then, you know, uh, suddenly it's like, okay, you know what, that barrier is gone. Now I definitely can do it. And it just kind of keeps me inspired and going. Um, yeah. So I, I absolutely love this tip as well. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, even when you do, it helps especially as well when you do have that whole being on the part, um, of like imposter syndrome, that's like mm -hmm. something that we all feel. But when you do meet somebody that has actually, you know, been through what you're going through at the moment and they've made it up to that level that you want to be at, it's like, hey, no, I'm very much in the right place and I'm very much here at the right time doing the right things. I don't have to feel any less worthy just because, um, you know, I'm not confident. The only reason why I'm not confident maybe is because I, uh, I've still got a lot of learning to do. But even that, even that person that is your mentor, they're still learning. And they'll tell you that, but they'll only tell you that when you spend time with them. Because you always look up, like, you know, in the comments you've just said, you know, you, suppose you feel like you've come into this conversation with somebody that's, you know, a rich person. But at the end of the day, um, it's it's one of those situations whereby I'm not any more, I'm not any more rich than the rest of you. I just uh, have sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry>. yeah. <laughs> no, but a lot of it is, you know, just making sure that you, um, like you said, surround yourself with the right people and you um, get that get the information that um, that is openly a available out there for everyone if, you know, you surround yourself with the right people that are willing to share it. So we have another question. Yeah. Where do you find a mentor? It seems like at uni you get given a mentor, but after that, nothing. That's true. And it depends on your goal. That's the first thing again, to go for right back to that goal. So what would you want a mentor in? Would it be, you know, mental health? Would it be to get to a certain job role? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, share, I'll, I'll share my personal opinion and what I would do. I would literally, um, I'd start off first by, of course, having in my mind an idea of what I, um, what I want to do next. Yeah. Um, or Starla put it, having that goal in mind. Um, but I wasn't so defined back then. I just thought, you know, what do I, what do I want to try this year? And then I talked to somebody who was already doing it. And if I felt that I had a good rapport with them after just an initial introductory conversation, for example, um, then I would take the extra step to say, you know what, I really want to get involved or I really want to learn. And I would love if you could mentor me when you have the time and exchange numbers, and then I take it from there. Uh, that's literally how I get mentorship. And uh, actually, in terms of the where, sorry to interrupt you, King, in terms of the where, just so I had a bit more time there to think about it. There's lots of, you know, social groups. It doesn't even have to be as, you know, as, um, you know, formal as networking events. Um, you can go on things like Meetup um, to, you know, find social groups for people have, that have the same interest that you have. And then you can, you can go from there. Sometimes your mentor, when it comes to a mentor as well, you don't, it doesn't have to be someone that looks like they've made it. It just needs to be somebody that's a level up from you so that you can then reach that level too. I, I want to say as well that I've used social media, you know, yeah. I'd introduce myself on social media. A lot of them I met through my, um, when I was involved in music. Uh, some of them were students and I would pause the lesson and then go, excuse me, all right, so... After this, can we talk? Because I really want to get into what I see you doing, that sort of thing. It's like, oh, I saw you at this event. I just want to, you know, you just wedge your foot in the door in whatever way you can. But as long as you're comfortable doing it as well. So, yeah. 
that's it. Did we answer that? Is there any more? Any more on that comment? Um, I didn't see any more, so I think yeah, yeah we're good. Cool. All right. So the next one we have for staying inspired is to own your rejection. Jesus. So that's a big one and it's hard to do, but if you can own it, that's the only way that you're going to improve. So that's whether you, you know, it's whether if you apply for a job and they say, you know, no, or you apply for some funding and they say no, or, you know, even you've asked to join Asked to join some kind of, let me just think of another example that might be outside of work. Uh, a club. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's true, actually. Yeah, if you get rejected from a club for, actually, you get rejected for stu stupid reasons nowadays. Oh, yeah, actually, there's not enough, there's not enough women in this club. So, you know, as a man, you can't go in. You own that rejection. Anything like that. The only reason why I say it is because you, you have a lot more to offer than what that situation has made you believe so in terms of that it's just about growing your, your strength really and growing a thicker skin so that you can handle more things that come your way so you know when when it does come to those experiences where you do experience sorry when it does come to those moments where you do experience rejection what i'm trying to say is in owning it you're taking it on you're understanding what's happened and you're using that then to be your muse for moving forward that's what I'm trying to relate to when I'm saying, you know, um, let it inspire you. Don't let it be something that knocks you back. Because if you let it be something that knocks you back, it's just going to keep you down. So you just own it, you take it on, and you use it as a way to push you forward. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying with regards to that. All right. I know, I'm feeling like I'm preaching here. I mean, you were. <laughs> But you know what, I, I am really, really passionate about that. As a person, I don't, I try, obviously I'm human, but I try really hard to not take things personally. And I'm, you know, um, I try, no, sorry, I do take them, but I try really hard to not have it having that much of an impact on where I want to be. That's what I'm trying to say. Sounds so, you know, I, yeah. So I will apply for things and I'll get knockbacks and I'll get that feedback and the feedback will say that I'm not qualified enough or that, you know, maybe I, I could have been more personable and things like that. but. That's not for me to be like, oh, am I not personable or am I not intelligent? It's like, no, I'm going to make an effort to show them how personable I can be. I'm mm. going to make an effort to make sure I have the knowledge next time so that they can't say that I don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you as a way to inspire, you know, as a way to knock you back if, if you can. That is so good. Um, essentially, it might, it, it'll still sting sometimes personally, but you want to look at it objectively and say, okay, so this is what I'm going to do next time then. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to improve it. So bounce back, bounce back. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Speaking of bouncing back, I was going to say, you know, kids always bounce back and they always try new things. And this is something that I'm such a fan of. And I saw somebody quote the other day, and I can't remember for the life of me who quoted it, but they were talking about basically how when you're a kid, you're not afraid to try new things. You just do. And no one says that when you, when you try those things, you have to be good at them. You just try them for the fact that they look they look like an activity it looks like an activity that might be enjoyable to you and the only way that you're going to know whether that's something that you enjoy whether it's something that's going to inspire you is by going and doing it so mm -hmm. you know for example actually come on I can be in you know brutally honest I didn't want to do this soon today I didn't want to do it because this whole situation makes me a bit nervous <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you wouldn't believe it, would you? This whole situation makes when I say a bit nervous, it makes me very nervous. But it's something that I'm trying that's different for me. And if I'm honest, now I'm in it, I'm enjoying it, and now I'm doing it, I am enjoying it. You better be. And, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you know, that if you don't try those new things, you don't know. You don't you don't know whether you are going to be inspired to continue doing it going forward. And this is just one example of that. So I know now that from doing this. I can do more of I can do more zooms going forward. Um, that is wonderful. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a journey. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, snap. Because you know, you know, everything is going online nowadays. So I'm used to, you know, that human interaction being in a room and you know, getting that getting that um, live feedback. So it is a very different platform. But um, yeah, but it is something that you know is like you know as I'm saying it's just help it will help me stay inspired to keep pushing forward to achieve what I want to achieve as well so that's all it is try new things wonderful all right what else you got for us 
in line with trying new things, trying old things. Oh. So if you know that there is something that sets your sets your heart on fire, you know, really fills you, um, and you haven't done it for a long time, but you remember those feelings, then just pick, pick it up and do it again. Do the, you know, bring those feelings back. Um, and in terms, you know, when I talk about setting goals and stuff and, you know, your day-to-day -day tasks, it's making sure that you incorporate these things into your day-to-day -day tasks so that um, you, you're you not getting caught in the monotony of just doing tasks that you're not, that you don't enjoy. So it's, you know, they, they do go hand in hand. If it is that, you know, you're, um, you know, you are setting those tasks that you clean in your house and you've got to run some errands and then you've got to do this and go, and that's all boring things. And yes, you've got your self-care in there, but as part of your self-care, throw in some of these inspirations, reclaim your passion, pick up that guitar that you haven't picked up for the last two years and, you know, play a tune. Cause you know, you remember how it used to make you feel when you used to play in that band, you know, things like that. The way it made you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give you the lyrics, but yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Um, it's, it's something nice to slip into your schedule, isn't it? And slip into your routine just to kind of boost your mood. And in, 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 in that feeling of progression is for, for me sometimes when I learn a new song, it's just like, oh, still got it. Still yeah. got it. Coming for you, Summer Walker. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's absolutely. Okay. Um, um, there's just two more to share. Are we? on time what we so looking at time we've gone over a little bit but okay. if you have more to share let's go through it let's go through it yeah, more in the mm -hmm. so then the other one to be fair is very much similar to the spend time with the mentor it's just to seek out the stories of others um share your experiences um and really that's just a case of um allowing you then to put yourself in a place whereby you can understand what other people are going through and know that you're not any different for going through your experiences um and it just gives you an opportunity to be able to air you know what it is that you're um wanting to achieve and um to hit to hear the same of other people mm -hmm. and lastly is to make a vision board to be fair this is probably the biggest one which is why i've left it till last so <laughs> but it's you know, some of us are some of us are more visual. Sometimes we look at the visual and it's more inspiring than looking at the to-do list. So, you know, if you do have those big goals that you want to achieve for yourself, you know, if you do have a certain way that you want to look after you going to the gym, put up your before picture, put up your and then you know, put up an after picture and say, This is what I want to strive to achieve. If you wanna, you know, make sure that one day you can afford a Louis Vuitton handbag, you stick that Louis Vuitton handbag right in the middle and you'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna work my way up to achieve that handbag. And you just put those things on that. 2021 put it on the 2021 vision board and stick them up there just so they're there as a constant reminder every day for you to be able to um push forward towards your goals that is great i i have heard a lot about vision boards but i couldn't do one properly um i just can't bring myself to do it properly because all i keep putting on it is pictures of janet jackson and tlc <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's a goal <laughs> I mean, uh, in my mind it was, but really it wasn't a smart goal. After you did your smart analysis, you were like, actually, maybe that's not, that's not yeah, a Yeah, it's not. Really, it's not. There's no way that I'd replace Lisa Left Eye in TLC now, is there? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was that. <laughs> Do it if it's comfortable for you. I just yeah. wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So but that... Is that was that the was that the, That's the last one? So now you just get to see me. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um, okay. Well, I want to thank you for taking your time out to teach us. Um, yes, I said teach us because I learned a lot. I took the notes about um, appro appropriate and effective planning and how we can take that into twenty twenty one. I just want to say this is the last of our series, uh, deck your halls. So hoping everyone can um, draw some inspiration for these over the holidays and then take it into the new year for a fantabulous and productive you. I said productive, productive you. <laughs> Thank you again, I'm King Navasa. These videos, these sessions are recorded live. We're putting them up on our YouTube channel. That's Black Beetle Health on YouTube. And um, you can also see them on our website. That's 
blackmeterhealth.co.uk. If you have any questions, I have any more questions for Starla or myself, you can reach out um, just in general at admin, admin at blackmeterhealth.co.uk and, um, and we'll get the questions to where they need to go. Uh, and Starla? That's it. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks for your questions. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad I could help and yeah, stay tuned. I'm sure um, you may see me another time. Yay! <laughs> Bye! -bye. Bye.